Shalom. I'm Eddie Chumney from Hebraic Heritage Ministries, and we welcome you today to our study on the Hebraic Roots of Christianity. We need to remember that when we're studying the Hebraic Roots of Christianity, we must keep everything centered on Yeshua the Messiah. That is because it is written in Psalm chapter 40, verse 7, Then said I, Lo, I come, in the volume of the book, it is written of me. That verse is quoted of Yeshua in Hebrews in chapter 10 in verse 7. That in the volume of the book, or in the totality of scripture, it is written of him. Then Yeshua himself stated in Luke chapter 24 verse 44, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the Torah of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Therefore, Yeshua stated that the Hebrew scriptures are written of him, that the Torah is written of him. So, central in seeing Yeshua in the Torah is realizing that Yeshua gave the Torah at Mount Sinai. And we can see this from the New Testament once we realize two things. Number one, Yeshua is our Savior. Number two, that Yeshua saves his people from their sins. By accepting this, realizing this, we can then make the connection. In Matthew, in chapter 1, in verse 21, it is written, And she shall bring forth a son, and you will call his name in Hebrew, Yeshua, which means salvation, for he shall save his people from their sins. Yeshua will save his people from their sins. And then in Luke chapter 2 and verse 11, it says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. So Yeshua is our Savior and he saves his people from their sins. Now we can make the connection to James chapter 4 in the first part of verse 12 which says there is one lawgiver who is able to save. So the one that is able to save, that's Yeshua, he will save his people from their sins, is also the one that gave the Torah at Mount Sinai. So Yeshua said in John in chapter 14 in verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. In stating this, Yeshua was making a reference, an association, or a link to the very first place in the Bible where we see this phrase, love me and keep my commandments. And this is found in the chapter in the giving of the Ten Commandments, Exodus, in chapter 20, where the one that brought his people out of Egypt, Exodus chapter 20, verse 2, is speaking to Moses, and he says in Exodus chapter 20, verse 6, that he shows mercy to thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So the phrase, love me and keep my commandments, means to follow his Torah. And in following his Torah, the one who said, love me and keep my commandments, says that I show mercy to you in doing so. And so then, if we go to Psalm 103 in verses 17 and 18 it is written but the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting to such as keep his covenant and those that remember his commandments to do them so the God of Israel bestows mercy or grace upon those who endeavor to keep his covenant those who endeavor to keep his commandments. So, there isn't a period of time that's the age 
of grace. The mercy or the grace of God is from everlasting to everlasting. We are told in Genesis in chapter 6 in verse 8 that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And then in Exodus in chapter 33, Moses beginning in verse 12 through verse 17 says to the God of Israel that if your grace is not with me and goes before me, then um, I'm not going to take this job that you want me to do. I want you to promise me that your grace and your presence will go with me. And the Lord says to Moses in Exodus chapter 33, verse 17, I will do this thing that you have spoken, for you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. And so we see the grace of the God of Israel was upon his people in the Torah. And the God of Israel is a God of grace and mercy. It's a characteristic of himself, Jeremiah in chapter 9, verses 23 and 24. And in Exodus, in chapter 34, verses 6 and 7, it says, The Lord passed by before him and said, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. And so the God of Israel says he's merciful He's gracious because he has always existed. His mercy and his grace has always existed. That's why Psalm 103 verse 17 says, The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. And he bestows mercy or grace upon those who seek his face, who those who put their trust and confidence in Yeshua as the Messiah. Those who say to Yeshua, I love you, and I'm going to show my love for you by keeping your commandments or following your Torah. We are told in Ephesians in chapter 2 and verses 8 and 9 that we are saved by grace through faith. Ephesians chapter 2, 8 and 9, for by grace are you saved through through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And so, Paul also explains this in Romans, in chapter 3, verses 28 through 30, where he explains that both Jew and non-Jew are justified, or are seen as righteous before the God of Israel by grace through faith. And then in Romans chapter 3, verse 31, Paul asks this question, Do we make void the Torah through faith? Do we do away with the Torah because we're saved by grace through faith? And then Paul answers the question and says, God forbid we establish the Torah. And so... We are not saved in our own merit. We're saved by grace through faith. But once we're saved by grace through faith, trusting in the covenant promises of the God of Israel, trusting in Yeshua as our Messiah, trusting in His shed blood for the forgiveness of our sins once we confess our sins and repent of our sins. Now, the way we express our faith in Him on a daily basis is to love Him, keep His commandments, because we establish the Torah. And then Paul taught in Romans chapter 7, verse 22, the way in which we are supposed to establish the Torah. He says, I delight in the Torah of God after the inward man. And so the inward man is the one that has the indwelling Holy Spirit. So when Yeshua died on the tree, he renewed the covenant. He brought in the new covenant, which Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 8, 
was made with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. And those from the nations are grafted into the covenant. So the God of Israel deals with us through Yeshua the Messiah on behalf of the new covenant and the new covenant in Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 33 Hebrews chapter 8 verse 10 is the Torah written upon our heart and the way he writes the Torah upon our heart is by his Holy Spirit and in John chapter 16 verse 13 Yeshua taught that when the spirit of truth has come, that's the Holy Spirit, he will lead you and guide you in truth. What is truth? Psalm 119, verse 142, Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your Torah is truth. Psalm 119, verse 151, All your commandments are truth. And then we can see the role of the Holy Spirit in Ezekiel in chapter 36. And verse 26, where he says, A new heart will I give you, a new spirit will I put within you. I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. You see, the stony heart doesn't follow the Torah. The stony heart follows the flesh. The stony heart is influenced by natural eyes, natural circumstances. A stony heart is weak in faith. So he's going to take out that stony heart, give us a heart of flesh, and then he says in Ezekiel 36, 27, I will put my spirit within you, and I will cause you to walk in my statutes, to keep my judgments, and do them. And so the way in which we are to love Yeshua, keep his commandments, or follow his Torah, is he's given us his spirit to lead us and guide us and instruct us in the way in which we are to follow his Torah. And so what we're doing is we're doing a series on Torah and the New Testament, and we're going through various passages, and we are explaining from many passages that traditional Christianity uses to try to make the claim that a believer in Yeshua as the Messiah should not express faith in him by following his Torah. We're going over these passages, and we are giving them the Hebraic understanding. We are showing you the meaning of the passages from a Torah understanding, and we're putting the passages in the context from which they appear in the scriptures. And so we have now started a series on the book of Romans. And in the last session, we looked at Romans in chapter 1 verse 17 which says for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith for it is written quoting from Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4 that the just shall live by faith and faith in Hebrew is the word emunah which means to put your absolute total trust and confidence in and to remain firm and steadfast in your trust and confidence and not be persuaded by any other thing. And so the faith and trust and confidence that we are to put is in the God of Israel to put our trust in Him because He is our righteousness. And we have a relationship with Him through the covenant that he has established with his people. And when we trust in his promises contained in his covenant, which he is backed by his own integrity, then we receive the promises of God. But in doing so, we cannot depend on ourselves. We cannot depend upon what our natural eye sees. We cannot depend on and react regarding our natural circumstances. We must keep our heart and our spiritual eyes focused on the promises of the God of Israel 
and cling to them. And this is how we are regarded as righteous before him. So, we are going through the book of Romans, and we are showing you how Paul is teaching Torah principles. He's teaching things consistent with the Torah and the prophets. And in doing so, he's showing you the application of the principles to Yeshua, the Messiah. And so now looking at the Torah, the nation of Israel was delivered out of Egypt by grace through faith. In Exodus, in chapter 3 and verse 20 and verse 21, it says, I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof, and after that he will let you go. And I will give this people favor. And this is the Hebrew word hain, which was translated in the King James in Genesis in chapter 6 verse 8 as grace. I will give this people grace in the sight of the Egyptians and it will come to pass that when you go, you shall not go empty. Was grace alone enough to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? The answer is no. It also required faith. And the faith that was asked upon them was they are to obey the instruction that they were given in Exodus in chapter 12, that they were to take a lamb of their households and they were to put the blood of the lamb upon the doorposts of their house. Exodus in chapter 12, verse 3 and verse 7. Therefore, the nation of Israel being saved by grace through faith is a Torah concept. It is something that we learn from the Torah. So when Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, that that is not a brand new and unique New Testament concept. He's only affirming to you in the New Covenant what the Torah has already laid out as principle regarding the issue. And so it's in this context, after Paul had already made the statement in his letter to the Romans in Romans chapter 1 verse 17 for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith trusting in the God of Israel and so we have elaborately been going over and explaining you this from the Torah and the prophets that Paul goes on to amplify this understanding in Romans in chapter 3 verse 20 where he says, Therefore by the deeds of the Torah shall no flesh be justified in his sight. That means in our own merit, in our own ability, um, without putting our confidence in the God of Israel, the Torah teaches that no flesh will be justified in his sight. Romans chapter 3 verse 28. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith, putting trust and confidence in the God of Israel. Without the deeds of the Torah, that is, without seeking to follow the Torah and by following the Torah, putting your trust and confidence in those things that you're doing in the Torah that's separate from putting your trust in the God of Israel and His covenant promises and the redemptive work of Yeshua the Messiah. That is because the Torah teaches in Deuteronomy in chapter the, the, the Torah uh, teaches that if you do not follow all that is written, Deuteronomy chapter 27 verse 26 in the Torah, that there's a curse upon you. It says, Cursed be he that confirms not all the words of the Torah to do them. That is, in the context, if you're putting your own trust in following the commandments and not trusting in the Lord as you are pursuing 
the commandments, that in your own trust, then you cannot find favor with the God of Israel. And so in Romans chapter 4 verse 16, Paul uses Abraham and his life in the Torah as an example to us how putting faith or trust or confidence in the covenant promises of the God of Israel is how we are regarded as righteous before him. Romans chapter 4 verse 16. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace. Grace and faith to the end that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the Torah, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the, the father of us all. You see, if it was dependent upon our own merit, then some would do better than others. And so the promise isn't assured to everybody because some's going to fail in their own effort, in their own ability. But um, the God of Israel, in his wisdom, the standard was putting your trust and confidence in him. And so it's based upon his integrity to fulfill his covenant promises in all those who trust in him. The promise is sure. It's based upon who he is and his promises. It's not based upon our own merit. In, in Galatians chapter 3, verses 6 and 7, it says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, quoting Genesis chapter 15, verse 6. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. So all those who walk and follow the example of Abraham will be regarded as righteous before the God of Israel, even as Abraham was regarded as righteous because he trusted in what the Lord instructed him to do. And the Lord operated in Abraham's life through a covenant relationship, Genesis chapter 15. And Abraham was instructed to believe in the God of Israel and in his promises that it was said to Abraham, the God of Israel said to him, I am your shield, I am your great reward. So Abraham's mind had to be anchored. And so in order to anchor his mind that what God said was true to him, the God of Israel said, now you look up to the sky and see if you can count the stars. That is the number of your seed. And the reason why his mind needed to be anchored is because Abraham's faith was going to be tested. And before Abraham would see the promise of God fulfilled in his life, his natural circumstances is going to look like that the promise of God is not so. And so the God of Israel desired that all peoples would be made righteous before him according to the way and the example of Abraham of how he was righteous before the God of Israel. Galatians chapter 3 verses 8 and 9. In the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen, the nations, through faith, preached the good news, the gospel to Abraham, saying, In you shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. And Paul then explains in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, So faith, that is trust and confidence, comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Because our trust is in what God has promised and what God has said. And if our eyes are always focused on our natural situation and our natural circumstances, then our focus will be off of what God has said. And especially if our natural circumstances speak contrary to what the promise of God said. So we have to keep our mind and our remembrance to what God has said 
and that we are in covenant relationship with him and he's faithful to do what he has promised. And so we have to keep feeding God's word and God's promises in our heart. And so our trust will be strong. That's why it says in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so Paul then is going to apply what the Torah teaches about faith and trust and confidence in God to faith in Yeshua. Romans chapter 4, verse 23 and 24. It was not written for Abraham's sake alone that it was imputed to him, but it was for us in whom it shall be imputed. Now he's going to apply it to Yeshua. If we believe on him that raised up Yeshua our Lord from the dead. Romans chapter 10, verse 6. But the righteousness of God, which is of faith, speaks this way. Romans chapter 10, verse 8. What does it say? What does the righteousness of God, which speaks by faith, says? Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Yeshua, believe in your heart that God's raised him from the dead, you will be saved. We will be right back in a moment. Welcome Stay back to our study today. And we are covering a series, Torah and the New Testament. And we are in the process of going through the book of Romans. And we are sharing with you those things which Paul is teaching in his letter here and showing how it is consistent with the Torah and the prophets. And so Paul uses the Torah and the prophets as the basis for what he is teaching in his letter, and then he's giving the application of the principles found in the Torah and the Prophets, applying it to faith in Yeshua and his redemptive work when he died on the tree. And so, in Romans, in chapter 10, verse 6 and verse 8, it says, But the righteousness which is of faith speaks this way. What says it? That if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Yeshua and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You see, you got to confess him as your Savior, as your salvation. Because it says in Isaiah in chapter 12 and Verse 2, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength, my song. He is my salvation. So our confession is the Lord is my salvation. The Lord is my Savior. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3, it says, No one can say that Yeshua is Lord, Yeshua is Yahweh, but by the Holy Spirit. And so, you have to confess your trust and confidence in Him, that He is your salvation. It's not your own merit in your own deeds that is your salvation. And then you got to believe it in your heart. Because this goes back to Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. And now Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you, verse 16, to be circumcised in your heart and be no more stiff-necked? And so, a circumcised heart in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6, loves the Lord God with all of his heart, mind, soul, and strength, and believes and puts his trust, his faith, his confidence in the Lord with all of his heart. Romans chapter 10.10 10. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans chapter 10 verse 11 For the scripture says whoever believes on him referring to Yeshua shall not be ashamed. And so here in Romans in chapter 10 and verse 11 as Paul is applying these principles to Yeshua, he's making connection to those things said in the Torah to the prophets. And here in Romans, 
in chapter 10, verse 11, he's making a quote or a reference to Isaiah chapter 28, verse 16, which says, Therefore, thus says the Lord God, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone. He that believes on him will not make haste or will not be ashamed. And so then Paul explains in Romans chapter 10, verse 12, that there is no distinction between Jew and Greek or Jew and non-Jew. There is no difference between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all that call upon him. And all, whether you're Jew or non-Jew, have to call upon him in the same way. You have to believe in your heart. You have to put your faith and confidence in the redemptive work of Yeshua as your Savior. And so then we're saved by grace through faith, not trusting in our own merit. Romans chapter 10, verse 13, for whoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. This is a quote from Joel chapter 2, verse 32, that says, it will come to pass that whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. So, Paul is connecting what it says in the Torah in Deuteronomy, and he's connecting it to Isaiah, he's connecting it to Joel, he's showing what the Hebrew scriptures say, and now he's applying what the Hebrew scriptures say as it regards to faith and trust and confidence and salvation, applying it to Yeshua because... Yeshua is the one that made covenant with Abraham. Yeshua is the one that gave the Torah at Mount Sinai. So, the righteousness and the salvation of the God of Israel through Yeshua the Messiah is for both Jew and non-Jew. Acts chapter 10, verses 34 and 35. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is not a respecter of persons, but in every nation he that fears him and works righteousness, Torah righteousness, as our example is given through Abraham, is accepted before him. So Paul explains in Romans chapter three, verse thirty Romans chapter three, verse thirty, seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith. The circumcision is a reference to Jews. And the uncircumcision, a reference to non Jews through faith. So whether you're Jewish or non Jewish, that the righteousness of God and how he sees us as righteousness is the same for both. One standard. It is trusting in the Lord. Romans chapter 4 verse 9. Comes this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, the Jew only, or upon the uncircumcision, the non-Jew also? When we say that Faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. So when the Torah says that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness, that's Genesis chapter 15, verse 6, Paul is asking the question, is that a reference to Jews only or non-Jews all? And so he says, no, it's for both Jew and non-Jew. Then he gives an example of in what way, in what manner, that Abraham was regarded as righteous before the God of Israel. It came about by putting trust and confidence in him. In Romans chapter 4, verse 10 and 11, it says, How was it then reckoned when he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? He was not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. And he received the sign of, of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all those that believe. And so, first, Genesis chapter 15, verse 6, Paul is explaining from the Torah, he's teaching from the Torah that Abraham, because he believed in the Lord, it was counted unto him for righteousness, and he was uncircumcised at this point. So his righteousness was not from something of the flesh. His righteousness was from his heart. 
that he trusted in the Lord. And so once it was established that he's in right standing with the God of Israel, then he's given the sign of being in right standing, which was the circumcision of the flesh, which is a sign or a seal. Romans chapter 4 verse 12 and the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. So whether you're Jew or non-Jew, if you follow what the Torah teaches with Abraham as our example, that the God of Israel will see you as righteous before him by operating in the same faith that Abraham expressed. And so Paul just then applies that faith to believing in Yeshua as the Messiah and his shed blood on the tree. Because in Romans chapter 15 verse 8, Paul explains that what Yeshua did was a confirmation with the promises that was made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Romans chapter 15, verse 8. Now I say that Yeshua Messiah was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. Yeshua didn't die to change the covenant promises that was made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or to do away with them, but to confirm and to validate that they were so... Paul explains that we inherit the covenant promises of God by trusting in the Lord and His righteousness. Romans chapter 4 verses 13 and 14. For the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, meaning here the context, if you study out the meaning of through the law, it means through our own merit. But it was through the righteousness of faith, meaning trusting in the Lord with our heart. For if they which are of the law be heirs, the context again is, if you, if you study the points that he's making in Romans chapters 1, 2, 3, and 4 that leads up to this, He's showing through Abraham's life, because in Romans chapter 4, he talks about Abraham's life. In Romans chapter 2, Paul explains uh, the difference between a Jew who is physically circumcised but is not following the Torah versus a non-Jew who is following the Torah in his heart but is not physically circumcised. That the non-Jew who's following the Torah is the one that has favor before the God of Israel. But the way in which he is believing in the God of Israel is by trust and confidence. It's not based upon his own merit. So, Romans 4.14, For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void. In other words, if it's based upon your own merit because of what you did independent of putting your trust and confidence in the God of Israel, it's not based upon faith, trust, and confidence. And that because the promise came by trusting in the Lord, then the promise has none effect. So is Paul here teaching that it's faith in Yeshua or following the Torah? No. If you study and examine what he's teaching and what he's explaining, he's teaching from the Torah, Torah righteousness, as opposed to trusting in yourself, and he's then applying it to faith in Yeshua. Philippians chapter 3 verse 9, and being found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law. So you see? My own righteousness, which is of the law. And so, the meaning of it is this, is trusting in my own righteousness that the Torah told me to do A, B, C, and I think because I did A, B, C, 
um, that I'm counted as righteous in the eyes of the God of Israel. In other words, trusting in what I did. And that is what's being called that of the law. But that which is through the faith of Messiah, the righteousness which is of God by faith, by trusting in the God of Israel. Romans chapter 9 verse 30. What shall we say then? That the Gentile, the non-Jew, which followed not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. So, first it says, followed not after righteousness. And so, if you're seeking to follow the Torah, you're following the right way in which you should live your life. Because if you're not following the Torah, then you sin. So, in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 23 and 24, it says, And he brought us out from there that he might bring us in to give us the land which he sware to our fathers. And he commanded us to do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God for our good always that he might preserve us alive as it is this day. Verse 25, And it shall be our righteousness or the right way we are to live our life if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he has commanded us. So let's explain what Paul is saying here because if you don't understand the Torah um, as Peter said in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 16 that those who are unlearned twist the words of Paul to their own destruction. So, sin is the transgression of the law. 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. So, are we to live our lives in a sinful way? No. So, what do we have to do to not live our lives in a sinful way? We need to follow the Torah. But as we seek to follow the Torah, which is the right way to live our lives, or righteousness, because the opposite of righteousness is sin, and sin is not following the Torah, so righteousness is following the Torah. So righteousness is following the Torah, but in following the Torah, I can't depend in following the Torah as a means of establishing my own righteousness. Because the Torah itself says that if I'm going to establish my own righteousness exclusively by following the Torah, that if I don't follow the Torah in one point, then I have violated all of the Torah. So that's what it means in Romans chapter 9, verse 30. The Gentiles which followed not after righteousness. In other words, the Gentiles who weren't pursuing the following of the Torah, that they attained to the righteousness which the Torah speaks of, which is putting their faith and trust and confidence of the God of Israel. So the non-Jews weren't pursuing following the Torah, but yet they're putting their faith and their trust in Yeshua as the Messiah, repenting of their sins and trusting in His shed blood for the forgiveness of their sins and making Him Savior and Lord and so, by putting their trust in Yeshua and not trusting in themselves and following the Torah, they actually have attained to what the Torah says is the righteousness of faith. So, here the Gentiles, Paul's explaining in Romans chapter 9, verse 30, who are not in their mind seeking to pursue the Torah, they're following what the Torah says regarding how the righteousness of God is regarding those who approach Him. But, if we seek to follow the Torah and we trust in the observance of the Torah as a means of establishing our own righteousness without putting the trust in the God of Israel in following the Torah, then we have no righteousness before Him. As He explained in Ezekiel in chapter 33, and then, if we look at 
Verse 13, when I say to the righteous that he will surely live, if he trusts in his own righteousness and commits iniquity, all of his righteousness shall not be remembered, but for his iniquity that he has committed, he will die for it. That's what Paul's explaining. Now, Romans chapter 9, verse 31. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, meaning the Jewish people identifying with and striving to follow the Torah, have not obtained to the Torah of righteousness or the righteousness that the Torah describes, which is ultimately expressed through Yeshua, because the Torah is written of him, as he explained in Luke chapter 24, verse 44, that Yeshua, he created the heavens and the earth, John chapter 1, verse 3. He made covenant with Abraham, Galatians chapter 3, verse 16, and he gave the Torah at Mount Sinai. So, if we look now at Romans chapter 9, verse 32, Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, by trust, but they sought it by the works of the law, meaning they sought to be in right relationship with the God of Israel, independent of putting their faith in the one that made covenant with Abraham, independent of the one that gave the Torah at Mount Sinai, not putting their trust in Yeshua. Romans chapter 10, verses 1 through 3. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal for God. What's the zeal for God that the Jewish people have? It is to seek to follow his Torah, but their zeal is not according to knowledge. It's not according to that which the Torah teaches. Their approach is not understanding what the Torah uh, teaches. See, Yeshua said in John, in chapter 5, verses 46 and 47, Yeshua is having a conversation with the Jews, and they believe in following the Torah. And Yeshua said, if you really believed and followed the Torah, you would believe me, for he wrote of me. But if you do not believe his writings, and what's the context of Yeshua saying that they don't believe his writings? They don't believe the Torah, Yeshua is saying, if they don't believe that he is the Messiah, because Yeshua says the Torah is written of him. And if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? So, Romans chapter 10, verse 3. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness. So, in trying to establish their own righteousness, it wasn't that they were seeking to follow the Torah in and of and by itself. They weren't following the Torah as the Torah teaches. And through the example of Abraham, that righteousness comes by putting your faith and trust in the confidence in the God of Israel, and that the Torah speaks and teaches of Yeshua. So, therefore, in truth, they're not following uh, the Torah, having not submitted themselves under the righteousness of God. Romans chapter 3, verse 21. But now, the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, meaning, once again, the context of without the law is referring to trusting in your own works and not trusting in the God of Israel is what he's calling without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, so now he's going to define Torah righteousness, that Abraham, our father, is our example, the righteousness of God, which is by trusting faith in Yeshua the Messiah, which is unto all and upon all those that believe, for there is no difference. It's to Jew and non-Jew. Romans chapter 3, verses 24 and 25. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Messiah Yeshua, whom God has set forth to be a perpetuation 
through faith, through trust and confidence in ourselves? No. Trust and confidence in His blood to declare His righteousness. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 6. The Lord is our righteousness to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. And so, Romans chapter 5, verse 17, God's righteousness is a gift. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one. How is it a gift? Because you don't earn it. It's not on your merit. He, Yeshua, is our righteousness. And it comes by receiving Him as your Savior through His shed blood on the tree. And so Romans chapter 3 verse 27. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? No, but by the law of faith. So in other words, I cannot boast in myself. No one can boast in their own righteousness. Because the Torah teaches if we trust in our own righteousness, then we have no righteousness. That's what it says in Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 12 and 13. And that which is stated in Ezekiel 33 is exactly what Moses wrote as well. So now Galatians chapter 3, verse 21 is the Torah against the promises of God? So is it following the Torah versus believing in the promises of God? Is following and obeying the Torah against the promises of God? Paul says, God forbid. No. The promises of God are contained in the Torah. So we trust in the Lord for our salvation, not based upon our own merit, but... If we love Him, we keep His commandments. And if we are not to sin, we are to keep His commandments. So the Torah isn't against the promises of God. It's the promises of God and trusting in Him is our salvation. And Yeshua is our righteousness. But then, in order to be obedient to Him, then we follow His commandments. We follow His Torah. He says... Where there is no Torah, there is no transgression. There is no sin. So, we believe that Yeshua is Messiah. He's our Savior. And we love Him by keeping His commandments. John chapter 14, verse 15. Shalom in Yeshua the Messiah. Amen.